Hello Photopillar, Rafael Dabar here. Great news guys, because next May 26th, there is the first and the last total lunar eclipse in 2021. So jot down the date because you can't miss it. The Earth will move between the Sun and the Moon, covering the Sun's rays and casting its strong shadow, also called the Umbra, over the whole full Moon. Depending on the atmospheric conditions, the Moon can take different shades of red, orange, brown and even yellow. In many total lunar eclipses, the moon becomes red. That's the reason it's popularly known as the blood moon. On top of that, the total lunar eclipse will happen during the supermoon. So the moon will appear a bit larger than usual. How cool is that? Well, long story short, if you wish to photograph this natural phenomenon, the first thing you need to figure out is where on Earth the total lunar eclipse is visible. Okay, let's start planning the eclipse. So go to photo pills and tap on planner. Now tap the map settings button you have here at the corner and then under map layers tap on eclipse and here you have all the dates of all the solar and lunar eclipses so today we're planning the May 26th 2021 uh, total lunar eclipse so tap on it I have it here and go back to the map notice that the date in the time bar has been set to May 26th 2021 the date of the eclipse now zoom out to see the eclipse info on the map cool also swipe the top panel to the left until you get to the second eclipse panel here we have it this one as you see the top panel is telling me that the total lunar eclipse will not be visible in the location of the red pin here in menorca also notice that the red pin is in the area where the map says the eclipse is not visible so unfortunately in Europe, Middle East, Africa, Russia, the eclipse won't be visible. As you know, the red pin represents my shooting spot. So if I want to photograph the eclipse, I'll have to move the red pin to a location where the eclipse is visible. And where is it visible? Well, you see it on the map. The eclipse is visible at moonset in uh, Canada, USA, Central America, South America, and part of the Antarctica, which is pretty cool. As I'll show you later, in these locations, some of the faces of the clips will not be visible. On the contrary, all the faces of the clips will be visible in Hawaii, where are you? Hawaii, in New Zealand, and part of Australia. And finally, the total lunar clips will be visible at moonrise in part of Australia, Oceania, Japan, uh, Asia, in China, and Russia. Again, in this location, some of the faces of the eclipse will not be visible. Well, now that you know where the eclipse is visible, let's see for a given location the faces you can photograph and the exact time each face occurs. Let's imagine that you live in San Francisco and you wish to photograph the total lunar eclipse. So the first thing you need to do is to place the red pin in San Francisco. How do you do it? Easy, just tap on the load button and then type San Francisco, tap on the result, and the red pin will be placed in San Francisco. How cool is that? Now, on the top panel, you have all the faces of the clips that are visible in San Francisco in the red pin position. But most important, you also have to time each phase of the clips occurs. Because on its journey through the Earth's shadows, the moon goes through seven phases. When the penumbral eclipse begins, it's when the moon enters the penumbral shadow, Earth's weakest shadow. The eclipse is almost not perceptible at the naked eye. Then we have when the partial eclipse begins. The moon enters the umbra shadow, Earth's strong shadow. The eclipse becomes more and more perceptible. And then we have when the total lunar eclipse begins. It's when the Earth is totally covered by the Earth's umbra, the strong shadow. Then we have when the eclipse is greatest, it's the central moment of the total lunar eclipse. And then we have when the total eclipse ends, when the partial eclipse ends, and the final phase, it's when the penumbral eclipse ends. Going back to the planner, in San Francisco, for the red pin position, the penumbral eclipse begins at 1.48 a.m. The partial eclipse begins at 2.45 a.m. The total lunar eclipse begins at 4.12 a.m. The eclipse is greatest at 4.19 a.m. The total lunar eclipse ends at 4.26 a.m. The partial eclipse ends at 5.53 a.m. And then is when the eclipse ends in San Francisco. Because in this location it is not possible to see the last phase of the eclipse when the penumbral eclipse ends, because the moon has already set. 
On the top panel, if you do one press on a Lunar Eclipse FaceTime, you'll see that the this time is set in the time bar, which is pretty cool. You can also swipe the time bar and see on the top panel how the eclipse evolves. Awesome, I love this. Well, to sum up, on the top panel you have the times each phase of the eclipse occurs, and on the map you have the direction where the eclipse occurs. You pay attention, you see this thin blue line that's moving now. That's the position of the moon at all time. So this is the position of the eclipse at all time. So with all this information, I think we have everything we need to plan our total lunar eclipse shot. Let's do it. If what you want is to photograph all the faces of the lunar eclipse without foreground, just the moon, then choose an open space as your shooting spot, like for example, this beach here. Yeah, this beach will work. What you want is to have nothing that's blocking the view of the eclipse. Then on the top panel, do a long press on the face of the eclipse you wish, for example, when the total lunar eclipse begins, to set the time in the time bar. And the thin blue line you see on the map will tell you where that particular phase occurs. Also, when you are at the red pin position, you can tap on the AR button and use the aumentary array view to visualize where the eclipse will occur in the sky. Here we have the moon, so the eclipse will be there. The moon is about to set. Awesome. I love the aumentary array views, they are so cool. Also, remember that you can swipe the time bar and see where the eclipse phases occur at all time. If you are in a location where you can photograph the eclipse low in the sky, it happens in the areas where the eclipse is visible at moonset and also at moonrise, then it's a good idea to align the lunar eclipse with an interesting subject, like for example in this photo by Paki Marquez. If you wish to learn how to plan this kind of photos, the moon aligned with an interesting subject, watch this video. Another option is to use a camera with a telephoto lens to photograph all the faces of the eclipse and a second camera with a wide-angle lens to photograph the eclipse path and also the landscape. And then put them together in post to create a composite image where you can see this beautiful and powerful landscape and also the big faces of the total lunar eclipse. But what's important here is to place each face of the lunar eclipse where it really occurred in the sky. Like in this photo you're seeing now by Jose Antonio Arbaz, which was featured by NASA. It's a fantastic image. The possibilities are endless, so let your imagination fly, come up with a great photo of the eclipse, plan it so you can go and capture it. Well, this video is all about planning a total lunar eclipse. In next week's video on Wednesday, I'll show you how to photograph the lunar eclipse, step by step. Also, I recommend you to download our super detailed lunar eclipse guide. I'm gonna leave a link in the description on this video and also in the first comment below. Check it out. And if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday in another video. And remember that you have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot legendary photos. Bye-bye.